everybody. Welcome to another episode of the AMS Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Michael Soto, discussing things about films past, present, and future. And as you can see here, kind of move my camera angle angle a little bit. And um, let's see how this episode goes. And as you see next to me, we're going to be talking about the Batman movies. I did a previous episode of ranking the Spider-Man movies, and as I've said in previous things or on other videos, I don't dislike movies or hate movies. I just, I enjoyed it. Would I revisit it? No, but I'll explain in a little bit of each of these movies, and the way I'm going to do this ranking is the films that I have seen and the reason why I'm phrasing this is because he's not in this picture that I have here, but I'm going to acknowledge and give high praise to one of the very first Batmans from the 1966 Batman, Adam West. I didn't realize, and I'm going to have to go down a rabbit hole and look for the 1966 Batman film. Um, that he did, minus his TV show, and to those who don't know or may have known, yes, the 1966 Batman was more a bit on the campy side, silly and at its time, and just praising one of the best, um, one of the originals to don the, to don the, the mask and the cape, the cape crusader himself, and so as I decided to go off of this list, and I'll go from the, uh, there's about 11 films that I'm going to mention through here, and then bring up some upcoming future films. And once I said I'm about to start the list, it's basically going to be more or less of, as you may have all known, that Robert Pattinson has, um, has donned the recently donned the cape as the Batman, and a sequel to the Batman will be coming soon. The expected time of release is about till 2025, so expect to see the Batman. And James Gunn, the director for, uh, um, most famously known for Guardians of the Galaxy films, Peacemaker, and a bunch of other films as well. He is taking over DC Comics and the films themselves, and he recently just announced that they will be doing another Batman film. And that this Batman will tie in with Robin, and not just any Robin. In the comic books, Robin uh, Batman has a son, and his son is, as James Gunn put it, is an a-hole. And it is Batman, the Brave and the Bold. So expect to see that one, I believe, in about 2025, 2026. So without further ado, if by all means you don't like my list, or once I reveal it, let me know um, how would you rank the movies and things like that. So let's go down the list here. And starting at number... 11 is, uh, as you see here, I'm going to minimize myself so you can see what I have here. I'm going to put at number 11, Batman and Robin, starring George Clooney, uh, Chris O'Donnell. Uh, let me just give you the cast here to those who may have not seen it. And the Terminator himself, Mr. Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mr. Freeze, and you probably would have seen all the puns he had. Chill. Uh, I don't remember exactly some of them. We had Alicia Silverstone as Batgirl, Chris O'Donnell, Uma Thurman as Poison Ivy. And I remember when I saw this as a kid, this came out back in 1995, 97, and at the time when they decided to do this version, it was basically really, I've, I've heard the gist of it, is to sell toys. 
and indeed they sold toys because I remember having some of those toys. And for the most part, it was cartoony and silly. But for me back then, it was cool just seeing all this variety of different things. And I've heard it being compared in comparison to um, to like the 1966 Batman. So it's, it's going to be at the bottom of the list at number 11. And as we proceed down to number 10, we go into a different person donning the cape. Oh, well, let me go back real quick. Oh, no, I don't have to explain it. The bat nipples, credit card. You know the movie. You've seen the movie. Yeah, okay. Now, number 10 is Batman Forever. And this one was definitely another one that after Michael Keaton finished his first two Batmans, they decided, once again, this this Batman came out before George Clooney took over. And Batman Forever stars Jim Carrey, Nicole Kidman, Chris O'Donnell, Tommy Lee Jones, and Val Kilmer. Well, you did have those catchy tunes like Seals, Kiss from a Rose. Don't want to sing the song, copyright versions. And basically, you know the song, you know the song, but it's a it's one of those 90s hits for sure. And definitely, once again... To sell toys, I remember even to those who um, knew in the 90s, the McDonald's Cups, I think I only had one, and it was of the Riddler. I never got any of the other ones. So let me know if if you know the nostalgia of those 90s Batman Cups that it ends up being something that you had. And... It was one of those, as we know, Jim Carrey, his for famously for his roles, um, and he took on the persona of the Riddler, and then Tommy Lee Jones' version of Two Face. And at the time, I enjoyed these uh, in my youth, and I, I'll still you could call these the these first two entries as the guilty movie pleasures, and basically. It's silly, campy, and um, it's one of those that goes down memory lane for my childhood. And, <coughs> excuse me. And at number nine, I'm going to start off with the 2017 Justice League. And this is the introduction or the new iteration of Batman played uh, by Ben Affleck who he teamed up with, Gal Gadot, Henry Cavill, Jason Momoa, Ezra Miller, and Ray Fisher. And once I watched, to those who watch the DC animated cartoons like Justice League and Batman, I saw that. And to kind of see DC's version of of the Avengers, but all these superheroes, it was okay. I looking back on it, I think I ended up I gave it an eight out of ten, kind of downgraded a little bit to a seven or a six. It was just what ended up um it was okay and seeing just the behind the scenes, just long story short, Zack Snyder has been a part of telling all these stories when he was with DC and basically Due to, and I'll explain it in the next uh, clip here. Basically, due to some family issues and family emergency, he had to step away and they brought in Josh Whedon. And I brought this up on my Spider-Man ranking. Too many cooks in the kitchen and warned to me, I feel like looking back on it, and I've said this in the past to people when I bring up this movie, DC or Warner Brothers was just trying to compete with Marvel and they were just trying to shove too many things into one basket, not letting the, the, the film breathe and things like that. So 
I maybe if I could, I'd probably switch this to the last and we'll definitely go into more detail on the other ones here. And as we proceed to our next list here, we're going to go to at number eight, we're going to go to Batman returns. And some of you may not like how I put this low as I give uh, the other two movies I haven't referenced just yet. But it, as uh, I've heard from some people on the internet, um, Michelle Pfeiffer's version of Catwoman was one of the best. This is Michael Keaton's sequel to the first Batman back in 1989. And we were attributed to Danny DeVito's version of the Penguin. And looking back on it, it was creepy. He did what he could, but the silliness and campiness is kind of to the measure of the other, the last two, the beginning previous films that I mentioned. And more or less in the sense of, uh, I preferred the other films because they're a little bit more or less better in storytelling and still villain stuff. And I'll go into detail as I uh, try and explain a little bit more. But um, as I go into the next one, I realize that there should be 12. But I'm going to kind of combine this next one here. And at number seven is Batman v Superman. I'm going to go with the extended cut. I'm going to toss out the theatrical version. Because once again, feeling like Warner Brothers is trying to tease leading up to, at the time, this was our first introduction at Ben Affleck as a older Batman who's, no spoilers, experienced loss, um, as you've seen in the trailer. And it was one of those where... It, this movie at the time was going up against Captain America Civil War, and they were both going to be released at the same time. And it basically decided to move, I believe, and uh, the Captain America Civil War stayed in its spot. And once again, Zack Snyder did this version of the, this superhero world, and the extended cut is a, a whole lot better and I don't know why just uh I'm not a movie studio I'm not in charge of movies or the making movies obviously it takes a lot of work as you already know my opinion on that so it's basically one of those that I would say it's at the bottom uh at that ranking I'm going to just combine those now that I've messed up on this list but as we get into the other ones the I'm going to go a little bit higher in the ranking because as you see here at the bottom, uh, going down the, the list here, the next one is um, the 2021 version of the Justice League. And it's Zack Snyder's Justice League. And overall, the reason for this was because Zack Snyder never really got to do his Justice League. And to those who may not know, I won't go into detail, but when he was doing the first one back in 2017, he had the unfortunate passing of his daughter. And uh, basically everybody was asking on the internet, you know, on the social media to my comic book fans, my movie fanatics, you know that even every people were asking for Zack Snyder's version of the Justice League. And lo and behold, Warner Brothers is like, okay, fine. And they put out a almost three hours or four hours. It's been a while that I've seen it, but it's about three to almost four hours long. It's a really long movie. And, I th and once I remember first seeing it, it ended up being more or less in the sense of it was fleshed out. It you still got certain parts that 
maybe didn't need to be in there, but you understood what they were leaning up to, the possibilities of building up into the world. And overall, I am kind of appreciated Ben Affleck's Batman, and he was able to get the redemption because in the 2017 version of Justice League, he was it was too flat the way the what was shown in the movie it didn't feel like the one you saw in the batman v superman version it was too silly and comical so i've i, I like ben affleck's version of batman because this one is a older like i said batman that has experienced stuff and basically has just gone to known that he's had to deal with a lot of things and we never really got he, he i didn't uh put it here in the list but he even made appearances in the the suicide squad movie and basic uh, i don't think he was in harley quinn's movie but more or less in the uh, sense of he did what he could for the movie and there was a possibility of Ben Affleck going to uh, direct a version of his movie, but looks like that's not going to be happening anytime soon. So as we proceed now to the cream of the crop, the top films, Christopher Nolan, and at number five, Christopher Nolan did his version of Batman, and it had been since George Clooney's last iteration, and Christopher Nolan is a very good filmmaker. I've liked his films. Besides his trilogy of the Batman trilogy, he made this version of Batman grounded um, more in, the, obviously, the realistic tone because some people, I've heard this conversation the other day on the internet or social media, that some people don't consider Batman a superhero. So he deals in the realistic tone. And what more of a realistic tone than presenting the character Bane? Because obviously, as you saw at the very bottom, at number 11, we were also introduced to a version of Bane who was just cartoony and silly, ridiculous. And Tom Hardy... Uh, gave us his iteration of Bane, and some of you I've I've heard on the internet, uh, I've seen videos that didn't like this version of Bane uh, sounded like Sean Connery, and so, <laughs> but this version, uh, I'm gonna go in a little bit of spoilers. You see Batman meeting his match, played by Christian Bale, and then another a, another version of Catwoman, played by Anne Hathaway. And her Selena Kyle was good, but people preferred Michelle Pfeiffer's. So I'm going to be leaving this one at number five. Yes, at number five. And it was one of those that the way the movie ends, it ends... It was introducing a lot of stuff, and it looks like it was only meant to be a three-part movie. And so basically, it's one of those that it ends up being a film worth watching and have being a part of. And I enjoyed it for what it was, but now we're going to the Mount Rushmore, the, the four. And the next one, at number four... I'm going to give love to Michael Keaton's Batman. And this was the second inter iteration of the Joker by none other than Jack Nicholson. Because if for my comic book fans, movie fans, an, a person by the name of Cesar Romero played Joker in the Batman film and in the 1960s TV show. And if you were to Google, uh, Google Cesar Romero, the Joker, you would actually, as you see here, my mustache, you would see that he had the entire makeup and he never wanted to get rid of his mustache. So you'll see his facial hair 
blended in within his makeup. And that was more of the comical version. Then we give another iteration to Jack Nicholson's Batman. Or Jack Nicholson's Joker, excuse me. And it basically just showed you as Jack Nicholson, who kind of actor he is at the time, or I believe he's now retired at the time of this recording from acting, but he gave one of his best versions of the Joker. I, as I referenced earlier, the the, the 90s animated series, Mark Hamill, AKA Luke Skywalker, also one of my favorite Jokers, but this Batman introduced us, um, was directed by, I just drew, I literally drew a blank. Um, oh my gosh, forgive me. Oh my gosh, uh, Tim Burton. I can't believe I couldn't remember Tim Burton. And to all those who knew uh, know Tim Burton, his sort of films, the wackiness, but it was one of those that definitely introduced Batman. Before well, before Batman, we were introduced to Christopher Reeves' Superman, and then this was a little more of the dark, dark tone. And going back a little bit, as I referenced the other previous Batmans, Michael Keaton had done two of the two Batmans, and he did fantastic here. He also did good in the sequel, but I believe he was, from what I've seen in previous outings, he was asked to maybe do another one, but I think he stepped away because they wanted to go a different direction. And as you saw, they changed Batman up completely different. And it's one of those that definitely is at the top of my list. And as we proceed now to the final three, at number three is the introduction to Batman Begins, directed by Christopher Nolan, Christian Bale, Morgan Freeman. Um, I want to say Cillian Murphy or Killian Murphy who played the Scarecrow, uh, Liam Neeson, and I always know, act. I don't know where I got this from, but I always know actors' names, and oh my gosh, Katie Holmes, Michael Caine, Gary Oldman, and I drew a brain fart, but I would say this is definitely the top tier. The reason being is because to all those who know, yes, in the comic books, we know that Batman gets, or Bruce Wayne loses his parents, and Bruce Wayne loses his parents, and that's pretty much it, and then he becomes Batman. But in this one, Christopher Nolan decides to introduce how Bruce Wayne, this billionaire, <clears throat> gained the ability to create all of these gadgets, the suit, learn the hand-to-hand combat, and basically become the character known for more than 80-plus years, I believe. That's how long Batman has been involved. And it was just a really good introduction to another one of the legend most famous comic book characters ever in the world. So I'm giving this one at number three. And at number two, one and two, I know somebody in particular, uh, some few people in particular not may not agree with my final two here. But as I stated earlier, Robert Pattinson, currently is has played the Batman and this one it's gonna be a little more dark in tone before it was released and this was a little bit I believe after 2020 going into 2021 and this iteration of Batman was for Batman barely being two years on the job just kind of get the gist of what he's really meant to be. And the way this was filmed and done, 
Um, we had a, I believe, a third iteration. Yes, a, a fourth iteration because I'd have to just look up the actress's name that played the Batman in the 1960s. But uh, I'm going to just read you all the list here. It was, uh, it was released in 2022. Sorry, not 2021. It got pushed because of COVID. We have Robert Pattinson, Zoe Kravitz, Paul Dano, another version of the Riddler, Colin Farrell playing the Penguin, Jeffrey Wright as James Gordon, Andy Serkis as Alfred, John Turturro, Carmine Falcone. Really good cast. And overall, Paul Dano's version of the Riddler it was um, as seen behind the scenes was basically a version of kind of like the Zodiac killer, because if you've seen the movie, leaving the notes and clues and definitely way different from what Jim Carrey did back in Batman Forever. And like I said, nothing against Danny DeVito's version of the Penguin. But this version of the Penguin by Colin Farrell was really, really well, done well. And it was one of those that it was more of a gangster type. And it looks like they're doing an origin. And also in the works, they're doing a Penguin series on Max, formerly known as HBO Max. And I believe it's coming out in the fall of this year, so keep your eyes on that. But I would, I enjoyed um, also the chemistry between Zoe Kravitz and Robert Pattinson's Batman and Robin, because this is like the early years, and in the comics, uh, Batman and Robin, Batman and Catwoman, um, and just their dynamic and their relationship, and it looks like I would expect to see Zoe Kravitz coming in the sequel. And pretty much just overall the way the styling and just the um, Gotham also is a character in this movie. And just the way it was, it's very gloomy, very bleak and dark, but you need to try something new. And they tried something new. Obviously, they didn't give you the origins. Once again, um, Bruce Wayne's parents are killed. Andy Serkis' version of Alfred is done very well. I am a fan of Andy Serkis' work on and off camera. Very well done actor. And, and to those who are Twilight fans out there, um, Robert Pattinson, he was a bat. And then he's a billionaire who becomes a Batman. So I definitely say... This one is at my number two. And obviously, as we are coming to an end here, you now are going to see that what my number one is. And before I reference, as you know, just I'll, 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 without, I don't know, how am I going to phrase this? To those who may obviously know, Yes, Heath Ledger's Joker. Uh, I'll start off by that. And the way this dynamic is of Batman already, uh, Christian Bale's Batman already having time in this film universe and having a set of rules and going through relationship issues, then just basically being the better person and knowing that you have to break the rules. I'm just trying to like remember vaguely certain aspects and parts. And then we got introduced to uh, another version of Two Place played by Aaron Eckhart. And that was done very well because in the quote from the movie, uh, you live long enough to see yourself become the hero, or I, I, I'm probably phrasing it wrong, you become the hero, you live long enough to be, see yourself become the villain. If it's something like that, don't at me if I didn't get it correctly. But overall, Christopher Nolan's, one of Christopher Nolan's best work, 
and just very entertaining and just done masterfully well. It's it does is homage to a film that I recently saw a few months ago uh called Heat because a moment where uh Christian Bale and Heath the late Heath Ledger's uh scene in the um in the waiting room it's one of those their dynamic is there and just all around good actors Gary Oldman's version of Commissioner Gordon was also a highlight of the movie and just the story elements overall I give it one of the best I may obviously revisit and I'm gonna have to change my list on my top four but I just see it a little bit better or a little bit above the Batman like I said I once this obviously once I show this video is once you all see this uh, when it comes out or later on I know some people who are going to disagree with me. That's totally fine. Film is subjective. And basically, it just becomes one of those that I was just, yes, it was a good comic book movie, but it, to me, it was also a very good film. And I think I've even mentioned this. As I said, it's up there in one of those films. Um and this version of the Joker that was presented in here, you had the anarch. You had, I believe, the gangster version was the um, the mafia type version was Jack Nicholson. This version, Heath Ledger was an anarchist in a way, and the version that we saw later on of Jared Leto. Um, who makes an appearance in Zack Snyder's Justice League is more or less of a gangster type, but going back to Heath Ledger for a second, it was eerie, and the first time I remember seeing it, unsettling, because um, he just did his own take on it, and I've seen the behind-the-scenes look up the behind the scenes of this and he, j he gained inspiration from I believe don't quote me on it but I I believe from Mick Jagger or certain Irish English people I don't have the exact name but overall I'm definitely going to put this at number 1 so that is it guys this has been an episode of the AMS podcast let me know what you all think. How do you rank the Batman films? Where do you see them? L leave your comments below. Message me on the socials. Um, Batman, as you saw as I in a previous movie, they're still going to continue to make more Batman movies because of the, the known IPA and just the vast majority of storytelling that as I referenced in the beginning of this, you're going to get another version of Batman done by, well, James, uh, James Gunn is in charge of the DC movies, but this is introducing Batman and Robin, but he has his son who is Robin. So expect all those movies. What do you not like about these movies? What are your favorites? What are your least favorites? Let me know. Thank you all so much for watching. I am your host, Adrian Michael Soto, discussing things about films past, present, and future. We'll see you all next time. Bye-bye for now.